The United States stands by its commitment that we've made to these people and it includes other vulnerable Afghans, such as women leaders and journalists. In fact, working in close coordination with the management of the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Wall Street Journal, we have successfully evacuated all 204 of their employees in Afghanistan on U.S. military aircraft earlier this week. We've established the flow of flights and we've increased the number of people we're moving out of the country. We paused flights in Kabul a few hours this morning to make sure we could process the arriving evacuees at the transit points. But our commander in Kabul has already given the order for outbound flights to resume. Even with the pause, we've moved out 5,700 evacuees yesterday. And we're working on a variety uh, to verify that number of the Americans are still in country as we work on this because we're not, don't have the exact number of people who are uh, Americans are there and those who may have come home to the United States. We're not, we want to get a, a strong number as to exactly how many people are there, how many American citizens and where they are. Just yesterday, among the many Americans we evacuated, there were 169 Americans who over the, we got over the wall into the airport using military assets. We're also facilitating flights for our allies and our partners and working in close operational coordination with NATO on this evacuation. For example, we provided overwatch for the French convoy bringing hundreds of their people from the French embassy to the airport. These operations are, con are going to continue over the coming days before we complete our drawdown. We're going to do everything, everything that we can to provide safe evacuation for our Afghan allies, partners, and Afghans who who, who, who might be targeted if, because of their association with the United States. But let me be clear. Any American who wants to come home, we will get you home. But make no mistake, this evacuation mission is dangerous. It involves risks to our armed forces, and it's being conducted under difficult circumstances. I cannot promise what the final outcome will be or what it will be, that it will be without risk of loss. But as Commander-in-Chief, I can assure you that I will mobilize every resource necessary. And as an American, I offer my gratitude to the brave men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces who are carrying out this mission. They're incredible. And as we continue to work the logistics of evacuation, we're in constant contact with the Taliban, working to ensure civilians have safe passage to the airport. We are particularly focused on our engagements on making sure every American who wants to leave can get to the airport. Where we have been seeing challenges with Americans for, for Americans, we have thus far been able to resolve them. We've been able, we've made, look, and we, we've, we've made clear to the Taliban that any attack, any attack on our forces or disruption of our operations at the airport will be met with swift and forceful response. We're also keeping a close watch on any potential terrorist threat at or around the airport, including from the ISIS affiliates in Afghanistan who were released from prison when the prisons were emptied. And because they are, by the way, and make everybody understand that the, the ISIS in Afghanistan are the, have been the sworn enemy of the Taliban. I've said all along, we're going to retain a laser focus on our counterterrorism mission, working in close coordination with our allies and our partners, and all those who have an interest in ensuring stability in the region. Secretary Blinken is with me today, met this morning with our NATO allies in consultation about the way forward so that Afghanistan cannot be used as a, in the future as a terrorist base of attack to attack the United States or our allies. For 20 years, Afghanistan has been a joint effort with our NATO allies. We went in together, and we're leaving together. And now we're working together to bring our people and our Afghan partners to safety. In the past few days, I've also spoken directly with the British Prime Minister, Mr. Johnson, Chancellor Merkel of Germany, and President Macron of France. We all agreed that we should convene, and we will convene, the G7 meeting next week 
a group of the world's leading democracies so that together we can coordinate our mutual approach, our united approach on Afghanistan and moving forward. We are united with our closest partners to execute the mission at hand. We've also discussed the need to work with the international community to provide humanitarian assistance, such as food aid and medical care for refugees who have crossed into neighboring countries to escape the Taliban. And to bring international pressure on the Taliban with respect to the treatment of Afghan, pe Afghan people overall, but including Afghan, particularly women and girls. The past week has been heartbreaking. We've seen gut-wrenching images of panicked people acting out of sheer desperation, you know, it's completely understandable. They're frightened. They're sad, uncertain what happens next. I don't think anyone, I don't think any one of us can see these pictures and not feel that pain on a human level. Now we have a mission, a mission to complete in Afghanistan. It's an incredibly difficult and dangerous operation for our military. We have almost 6,000 of America's finest fighting men and women in, at the Kabul airport. And we're putting their lives on the line, and they're doing it in a dangerous place to save other Americans, our Afghan allies, and citizens of our, our, our allies who went in with us. You know, I, I, talk, I talk to our commanders on the ground there every single day, as I just did a few hours, an hour or so ago. And I made it clear to them and we'll get them whatever they need to do the job. They're performing to the highest standard under extraordinarily difficult and dynamic circumstances. Our NATO allies are strongly standing with us. Their troops keeping sentry alongside ours in Kabul, as is the case whenever I deploy our troops into harm's way, I take that responsibility seriously. I carry that burden every day just as I did when I was vice president and my son was deployed to Iraq for a year. There'll be plenty of time to criticize and second guess when this operation is over. But now, now, I'm focused on getting this job done. I would ask every American to join me in praying for the women and men risking their lives on the ground in the service of our nation. As events evolve over the coming days, my team and I will continue to share the information and update the American people on exactly where things are. We'll use every resource necessary to carry out the mission at hand and bring to safety American citizens and our Afghan allies. This is our focus now. And when this is finished, we will complete our military withdrawal and finally bring to an end 